Hi budding engineers welcome to the section in lectures and welcome to the new playlist on analysis and design of structures using stat pro e tabs excel spreadsheets seismic and wind analysis in the previous class we have seen the analysis and design of a rcc circular beam rcc circular beam right in today's class we shall see the analysis and design of rcc assembly hall building it's a portal frame using stat pro and verification with manual calculations right confirming to is 456 2000 which is the indian standard code of practice for plain and reinforced concrete and as well as sp 16 1980 design aids for reinforced concrete to is 456 1978 now using the limited design of the structures right this is how we will examine the design of a portal frame student right uh, that of an assembly building right before we see the analysis analysis let us see the brief pro profile of the speaker that of my right this is on my uh, brief profile student i'll just uh, quicker pace at i dr d rupesh kumar obtained my btech in civil engineering from nagar university in 1994 and mtech in structural engineering from jntu in 2009 2000 and phd in structural engineering from jntu hyderabad in 2009 presently i'm working as associate professor uh, in department of civil engineering university college of engineering osman university i have a teaching experience of 27 years of which 7 years is in, in industry and as well as a 20 years is in teaching research at graduate and post graduate level right my research areas include reinforced cement concrete steel uh, designs structural analysis fundamental element analysis earthquake engineering bridge engineering structural optimization i published 45 research papers in international and national journals and conferences etc and organized 3 international conferences and 11 national conferences workshops and attended 43 workshops and visited two countries and delivered 13 guest lectures and edited three books right and at present i am uh, uh, supervising uh, 14 phd scholars and supervised 30 me uh, uh, scholars right and i am uh, actively involved in various consultancy works that are offered by the department and completed over 750 design proof check works as well as 150 design of rcc reinforced cement concrete steel composite high rise towers as well as that of the road and rail bridges road and rail bridges right? once we see this brief propulsion and let us move quickly to the tough the designs right what we are supposed to see in today's class is this design of an rcc portal frame actually this is the portal frame of that of an assembly building now let us see the problem definition student right this is how uh, the analysis uh, analysis and design of rcc hinged portal frame of an assembly hall of an assembly hall Uh, measuring measuring 33 meter by 8 meters uh, it's a uh, inner size is uh, 33 meter by 8 meter like this right therefore that is a 33 meter by 8 meter right uh, this is uh, almost a plan uh, right uh, wherein wherein now we'll see we'll see what are uh, what is also the data given is uh, with six base with, with six base spaced at every 5.5 meter right there are six base here 1 2 3 4 5 five base are shown now i am taking six base at every 5.5 meter 5.5 meter that is of the spacing as well as the span of this uh, frame frame is uh, 8 meter 8 meter right however i am not going to deal with that of the design of the slab as well as that of the footing in today's class we shall see only the design of the beam as well as the column that of the pure portal portal frame alone students right now in the in uh, the other videos we shall see the total other designs of the slab as well as the footings footings right that is how the problem uh, given student confirming to is 456 limited design right this is rcc hinged portal frame now let us see the problem definition uh, a hinge based rcc reinforced cement concrete portal frame is 8 meter just now we have seen uh, from the given uh, problem data it is 8 meter span and uh, 4 meter height this height of the uh, column is uh, 4 meters 4 meters and it carries an uh, 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 live load live load of 30 kilo newton per meter 30 kilo newton per meter right design the floor beams the floor beams as well as that of the columns that of the columns for the frame use m25 grade concrete 
and if you 550 grade steel, if you 550 grade steel, right, and draw the neat sketches of the design details, right, and that is of the uh, um, problem data given student, right. For this problem data, now I just shown the schematic here, like this, right. Therefore, there is a, the base um, uh, of this uh, portal, portal is hinged at the bottom, right. Uh, therefore, I am saying that base is given by this A as well as that of the D. Whereas B to C is the beam, B to C is beam. Whereas A B is a column and uh, C D is a column, right? B C is the beam of this portal frame, of this portal frame, of this uh, building. What I have shown, I'm just considering one portal frame, student, right? Interior portal frame, right? This portal frame, whose span is uh, eight meter, and the uh, spacing of this base is 5.5, 5.5. Therefore, the load coming onto this. Uh, portal is 5.5 by 2, 5.5 by 2. Therefore, load is coming from 5.5, 5.5 meter, 5.5 meter onto this, which is now calculated like this, right? Uh, uh, that is how actually it is calculated. But I am saying that it is 30 kilo uh, per meter. But how it is calculated? Because it is a, a portal frame, a portal frame, and even assuming that, uh, even assuming that uh, at a, a later point it will be extended for one more floor, one more floor, right? Or access is provided. Access is provided to this uh, ground floor, ground floor building where even people will um, go for um, uh, say buffet, buffet section, right? Therefore, I'm assuming that live load on that uh, uh, ground floor, ground floor is at the rate of four kiloton per meter square as per IS875 Part Two. IS875 Part Two, right? For further uh, uh, discussions on the dead loads and live loads, you please uh, revisit our. Um, uh, playlist on uh, 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 design of steel structures. There we have discussed elaborately how the dead loads, live loads, and wind loads and earthquake loads shall be considered elaborately in uh, three uh, uh, dedicated videos. Dedicated videos. Please revisit that. Right? Therefore, I am just considering that uh, live load, assuming that uh, the um, people will go for a buffet section there in the ground floor terrace. This is the terrace floor, right? Therefore, there. Four kiloton per meter square is assumed, as well as that of the uh, that of the floor finishes are assumed at the rate of 1.5. Therefore, the total load 4 plus 1.5 is equal to 5.5. That multiplied by the uh, spacing, the spacing uh, from uh, each of these bay 5.5 by 2 plus 5.5 by 2. Now it works out 5.5. Therefore, this 5.5 multiplied by 5.5 it now works out 30.25, or say 30 kiloton per meter. That is what is shown here as 30 kiloton per meter, 30 kiloton per meter for this uh, assembly building. For uh, this assembly building of height 4 meter, right? Half height 4 meter, right? Now that is how the uh, span is given as 8 meter. Student, I'm just no making note of that uh, given data. Uh, I am uh, noting out the data and uh, the other data is uh, FCK. Characteristic composition strength of the concrete is given as uh, 25 and uh, yield strength of the steel. Yield strength of the steel is given as 550 Newton per mm square. And now, now we are assuming that uh, from the experience, right? I am assuming the beam as well as the column sections as uh, as 450 mm by 600 mm. 450 mm. 450 is the width of the uh, width of the beam as well as the depth of the beam is 600 right as well as that of the column is 450 mm 450 mm and in the direction of the portal it is equal to 600 mm now we will show right like this right in the direction of the portal it is 600 mm right like this student right therefore this is 600 and this is a uh, uh, 450 and this depth is equal to 450 and this width is equal to 450, uh, 450 whereas this depth is equal to depth is equal to 600 right now i hope you are understanding these discussions then let us see uh, using these using these dimensions right and even now assuming the clear cover as 25 mm 25 mm therefore now i'll calculate the first subheading as uh, loads right loads on the frame right uh, already just now we have calculated what is the uh, total live load live load is equal to 30 kiloton per meter it worked out actually 30.25 but now we are saying say approximately 30 kiloton per meter as well as uh, sulfate of the beam with this assumed section as 0.45 multiplied by 0.6 multiplied by density of the concrete from IS 875 part 1 part 1 the density of the concrete is equal to 25 kiloton per meter cube therefore uh, multiplying now i'll get uh, 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 6.75 6.75 kiloton per meter is the dead load now you can see student right almost 6.75 compared to that of the 30 6.75 divided by that of the uh, 30 is almost uh, 
say 22.5 percentage if you neglect this sulfate i think the analysis results will vary student therefore don't neglect don't neglect right? this is a massive massive section right massive section 6.5 almost the dead load itself is compared to that of the live load it is equal to 22.5 percent student therefore live load cannot be neglected cannot be neglected whereas in the previous video we have seen that there i have asked you to just neglect the sulfate sulfate but here i am not neglecting that please make note of students right now therefore clubbing both of these 30 plus uh, 6.75 it works out the total load is equal to the unfactored load w is equal to 36.75 36.75 right now uh, now let us see first of all we'll see this problem in two phases student right one manual calculation uh, for verification and second one is using the analysis as well as design using the stad the stad pro right now let's see first manual calculation student right now i'll enter into the manual calculation therefore now what i'll do is that uh, for manual calculations i'll calculate the distribution factors for this joint b whereas for this joint b i will have the member ba and b, um, bc bc but we already uh, know from the structural analysis fundamentals how to calculate the distribution factor i think i'll not go into those fundamentals student right therefore when other end of this uh, um, and there is the joint B, right? B A. B A is the column, whereas A is hinged at the bottom, right? A is hinged at the bottom, right? Therefore, once uh, um, uh, one end is fixed, one end is fixed, the other end is hinged, then the relative stiffness is given by 3, 3 by 4 E I by L, E I by L, right? Therefore, R I by L, right? Where E is a constant through and through in the, in the numerator as well as denominator, it gets cancelled, right? Therefore, 3 by 4 E I by L. Whereas now length of this column is equal to 4 meter, substituting which now I get 3i by 3ei by 16 or simply E I am deleting from each of this calculation because it gets cancels in numerator as well as denominator students. Right? Therefore, 3i by 16. Now similarly that of the beam, I by L. However, you please see that this beam is fixed at both the ends because of the continuity in the form of the columns. Continuity in the form of the columns like this, right? Therefore, it is presumed to be fixed at both the ends. Then I'll take I by L, whereas the length of the beam, length of the beam is equal to 8 meters. Therefore, I by L. Hence, so the distribution factor of that of this column BA is the uh, stiffness, the stiffness of this column. Uh, which is a 3i uh, 3i by um, 16 and that of the stiffnesses of the all the uh, members meeting at, at this joint at this joint however one column is meeting which is of uh, um, three three ei by 16 and that of the one beam is meeting here i by 8 i by 8 or ei by 8 therefore now it works out 3 by 5 which is uh, say 0 0.6, 0 0.6, right? Like that, uh, like that. Even uh, I'll find out for that of the beam, for the beam. Therefore, I by eight divided by three, I divided by sixteen plus I by eight. It works out two by five. Therefore, the check is three by five plus two by five is equal to five by five. Therefore, hundred percent. Hence the check. Hence the summation of these two must be hundred percent. Yes, I got the check, right? Once I get the check, similarly, I, I think um, you can do at the joint C because it is perfectly the mirror image. Therefore, for the C B, C B, what I'll do is that of the BC because uh, because there is no change in the moment of inertia of that of this uh, column left column to that of the right column there because of that because of that it is perfectly the mirror image student therefore that of the CB CB now I'll get uh, 2 by 5, 2 by 5. Similarly, that of the CD, CD is equal to that of the BA, which is 3 by 5, right? Once I do this uh, distribution factor, student, now I'll move to that of the fixed end moments, fixed end moments, right? Now, oh, uh, let us see. Uh, you know how to calculate the fixed end moments for different uh, types of loading, student, right? Now, now I do have FBA, FBA, and FAB, FAB, right? BA and um, AB both are zero because on this column, on this column, there is no load shown. There is no load shown. If at all there is some load shown, either uh, like this concentrated load or that of the UDL, I would not have calculated. But there is no load shown on this columns, right? Columns. Therefore, as well as that of the uh, right side column, CD also. Hence, both on both of these, the fixed movements are zero. Fixed movements are zero, right? Now. However, only the load on the beam is only given, right? Uh, therefore, the fixed end movement due to that uh, UDL is equal to W square by 12. On the left hand side, it is W square by 12, right? On the right hand side, it is W square plus W square by 12. Whereas, uh, the due to the given loading, the beam is sagging, positive bending moment. Therefore, the moment of resistance is in the opposite direction. Therefore, the left hand minus and at the right hand, this is 
plus W square by 12, right? Substituting which now I'll get a W. W is 36.75, just now we have seen, and L, L is 8, 8 square divided by 12. Now it works out, say, 196 kilonewton meter. These are the unfactored, unfactored values. Similarly, at FCP, it is plus 196.5. Uh, sorry, 196 kilonewton meter student, right? Now, once I uh, uh, obtain the um, fixed end moments, what now I'll do is I'll just move to move to the top of the uh, 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 distribution, right? I'll carry out uh, the distribution so that uh, the moments will be uh, uh, redistributed among the uh, available joints at the among the available members at these at these joints B and C B and C right now therefore I am doing that uh, movement distribution uh, using movement distribution method you already know what is the movement distribution method which is already taught at a graduate level either in strength of material or the structural mechanics are that of the are that of the structural analysis you please revisit that therefore now I do have this uh, first the joint joint A B, C, D. Four joints are there. Now, next row is that of the uh, the distribution factors. At the joint B, we have just seen B A is equal to 3 by 5. And at um, B, C, 2 by 5. Similarly, C, B, 2 by 5. And uh, C, D, 3 by 5. I have written that second row, which is the distribution factors. Then, uh, uh, next one is the fixed end movements. At A, I don't have any bending movement. As well as uh, at B, at B. At B, there is no fixed end uh, movement in the column, student. In the column, because there is no load, there is no load uh, on the column, on the column. Therefore, on this column at B, there is no load. However, at the joint B, in the in the beam at joint B, there is a movement of 196, 196 minus 196 kilonewton. Therefore, that minus 196 at the other end with this plus 196. Therefore, just now we have calculated here this one and plus minus 196 at plus 196. I'm just recalling that and I'm sub and putting here and on the uh, right hand side column also there is no loading. Therefore, it is 0 and 0. That is how the fixed movements are just uh, noted down in this uh, first row. Then what I'll do is, uh, however, you please see that there is unbalanced movement here, right? Minus 196, which is distributed uh, among the uh, members, right? Um, among the member BA, BA. Therefore, the um, uh, difference of these, right? Min minus 196 multiplied by 3 by 5 with plus sign in the member BA, which works out, it works out 117.6, 117.6 student, as well as minus, uh, one, uh, minus 196 multiplied by 2 by 5 with plus sign, it works out. 78.4, 78.4, right? Doing the same, it is a military mass student, it is surface military. Therefore, this plus will become, right, with minus, minus 78.0, 78.4, as well as in in uh, the member C, C, D, it is not zero student, it should be, uh, it should be minus 117.6, minus 117.6, right? However, now we'll, uh, what we can observe, what we can observe that uh, once I, uh, um, uh, distribute these movements at uh, the joint at the joint B as well as C. The next step, the next step, what I'll do is this uh, next row is that of the carryover, carryover. Therefore, this uh, 78.5, uh, sorry, 78.4 will be carried over to the other uh, other continuous joint, joint C, joint C, right by 50 percentage. Therefore. Uh, 0.5 multiplied by 78.4, it works out 39.2. Similarly, this uh, minus 78.4 multiplied by 0.5, it works out say minus 39.2. Therefore, I have just done one cycle of redistribution of the movements. This is what called one cycle. Therefore, at the end of this one cycle, now I'll just sum up all the movements and uh, at uh, joint A, 0, right? At joint B, these are the uh, movements, right? In member um, B, A, I do have plus 117.6 in member B, C, I do have minus 156.8. Similarly, at joint C, I do have 156.8 plus and um, uh, in uh, member C, D, I do have minus 117.6, right? Whereas uh, at uh, uh, joint D or in member D, C, the uh, movement is equal to zero. But however, we can see that uh, uh, there is still unbalanced movement is there, right? The, to the tune of right uh, minus uh, uh, 156.8 117.6 therefore that difference that difference right the difference of these two multiplied by 3.5 therefore i'm just having the second cycle right i think this is self explanatory right doing with now you will get uh, the redistribution of the movements at the at this will uh, carry 
23.52 and 15.68 right similarly here minus 15.68 and minus 23.652 uh, therefore now this is carried over in the second cycle as a 7.84 and this is carried over in the second cycle as minus 7.4 therefore at the end of the second cycle at the end of the second cycle these are the final movements right 0 141.12 minus 149 148.96 uh, 148 and 148.96 or minus 141.120 but still we can see that there is a difference uh, difference of around uh, say some uh, 7 point 7.7 7 is there therefore now I'll carry over uh, I'll uh, do that for the third cycle. Therefore, at the end of the third cycle, still I can see that 145.8 to 147.92. Still, I can do one more cycle. Therefore, in the next cycle, I am getting right at the end of that, I am getting 146.76, 147.57. Right. Therefore, now still I hope that uh, we can do one more cycle. Therefore, uh, if I do for one more cycle, I am getting 146.76 has come down to a value of 146.75. 147.07 has come down to 147.13. Almost we can see that, right? There is no um, much difference from that of the previous cycle. Therefore, now I'll say that the, uh, I'll stop here, right? That is how the, my final movements, my final movements, right, are like this, right? Therefore, these are my final movements. Final movements are like this that uh, at joint A in member A B zero and at joint B in um, in column, in column, right here, 146.95, whereas in beam, it is 147.13, right? Uh, rest of that is mirror image. I'll not explain, right? Therefore, once I do that, student, now let us uh, go, go uh, let us move to that of the uh, designs, designs. So far, we have done manual analysis. Now, I'll proceed with that of the manual designs, manual designs, right? I hope, student, you are understanding these discussions, right? Now, let us uh, initiate the designs, uh, manual designs of the beam side. Right? Now, uh, the first one is uh, the data already given. We already know that depth of the beam, depth of the beam is uh, say 600 mm and uh, cover is assumed as uh, 25 mm. Therefore, the effective depth of this uh, assuming 20 mm, 20 mm dia bar, 20 mm dia bar. It now works out 600 minus 25, um, uh, clear cover minus 20 by 2 minus 10. It works out uh, 565 is the effective depth up to the center of the main steel, uh, tension shield, right? Now, and uh, just now we have seen that uh, in the beam, in the beam, these are the final movements, right? 147.13, 147.13 is the governing, governing movement, right? Like that student, what we can do, what we can do is even, uh, this is only the negative bending movement, like, right? Even you know what is that, uh, 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 simply supported, uh, simply supported uh, movement, right? Which is 30 multiplied by 8 square, right? 60, uh, 8 square divided by 8, right? Therefore, that, that works out, right? Simply supported uh, bending movement is 240 at the, if at all, it is uh, both the ends are assumed as a simple support, right? I do have maximum bending movement at the mid span as 240, but uh, to out of the 240, what I got, uh, what I got here at uh, the ends, uh, at the ends as uh, 170, 17, uh, sorry, 147, 147. Therefore, now I'll uh, deduct that 147.147.13, 147.13. Therefore, now I'm getting, I'm getting the uh, difference, difference of this result as 92.9. 92.9 is the uh, difference of these results, right? That will be there as a positive bending moment, right? Therefore. Out of this positive bending moment of 92.9, positive bending moment, right? Positive bending moment of 92.9, whereas a negative bending moment of 147.13, 147.13, what governs the design is this 147.13 at the, at the uh, column support, at the column support. That will govern the design, not that of the uh, positive span bending moment positive span bending mode, it is only just 92.9. Therefore, that will not govern the design student, right? I hope you understood the uh, discussion, right? Therefore, the design bending mode is about 147.18, uh, right? Now, once uh, I see this, uh, I see this, uh, that is how the uh, 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 design student, right? Uh, now, I'll initiate the design of this uh, using IS-456, IS-456, right? Now, what I'll do is I'll go to IS-456, class 38.1, page number 70, or alternatively, what I can do is that I can go to that of the SP-16, 1980, class 
2.2 page number 9 page number 9 right uh, let me revisit that at a quicker pace right therefore i am there in that uh, page right here from this table b what we can see that x max by d values are available only up to 500 for 500 is 0.456 however x max by d is given by this formula 0 0.0035 divided by 0 0.055 plus 0.87 fi divided by es where is the yes is the young smallest of the young smallest of the steel therefore substituting with now i'll get uh, for this uh, 550 grade steel x max by d as 0.443 0.443. Now, once I get this x max by d student, then even I'll move to IS 456 class G, annex G, right? Within that G, 1.1 uh, C, page number 96, page number 96. Therefore, let me go to that uh, page student at quicker pace, right? Uh, or alternatively, even, uh, or alternatively, even, even using, using this, this uh, SP16, SP16 also, right? right? Here, Here reduce the, the tables, right? right? Where well, reduce MU, MU uh, lim divided by FCK mm square for different, different this one, but I don't have MU lim divided by FCK mm square for 550, 550. Therefore, now I can calculate that. I can calculate using the fundamentals, using this formula, right? Where MU lim is given by this point, this is FCK, BHU max, multiplied by D minus point, 4 to XU max. X to max, right? Alternatively, I'll move to that of this IS456. I am there in NSG student. Uh, I am there in IS456, NSG, right? For rectangular sections, right? This is how we already calculated what is the neutral axis depth. Uh, but now let us move to, uh, uh, I have not calculated, but now let us move to this uh, MU lim, MU lim, I calculated that. Therefore, MU lim is given by limiting amount of resistance, 0.6 X max by D, 1 minus 0.4 to X max by D, FCK by D square. But uh, X max by D is just obtained, just pre uh, obtained as point, as point uh, um, uh, 443, substituting which? Now we get substituting me now we get uh, MU lim by FCK square is equal to 0 0.123. 0 0.123. Therefore, once I know that now I can calculate uh, what is that uh, minimum depth or the depth required from flexure point of view. Right? Now this is all just checking. This is the heading as a check for depth. Therefore, the depth required is also total MU divided by 0 0.123, not 0.126. Student, this is 0.123 FCK B. Therefore, FCKB. However, here MU, MU is equal to this is the working load because of the working load I got 147. Therefore, now you multiply with a factor of safety, partial safety factor for dead load and railroad combinations is 1.5. Therefore, that 147. 147.11 uh, uh, multiplied by 1.5. It now also say 220.6. Uh, 220.7 approximately, right? 220.7, right? Therefore, for that factored moment, now if I calculate what the depth required, now you get that depth is equal to 399, not a 322 student, right? That now I am getting 399. Hmm. Therefore, however, now now let me check, right? How what is the depth? What is the depth provided, right? The depth provided from the experience is 565. Therefore, the depth required is only 322. Therefore, now. I can say that section is under reinforced because more concrete is provided, more concrete is provided, the steel will not reach its permissible values first, therefore only, uh, right, uh, sorry, the concrete will not reach its permissible values, right, it is under reinforced section, only the steel will reach its permissible stresses first, permissible stresses first, therefore once I know that, then I'll go to the next subheading as the calculation of the area of the steel, calculation of the area of the steel, right, that is how. Now, uh, as per this uh, class uh, 456 of this, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, Indian Standard uh, Code, uh, IS 456 class, just now we have seen that uh, annex G, 1.1.B, page number 96. What now I can also see from the same page is that uh, MU is given by this uh, 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 equation 0.87 FI AST D minus 1 minus FI AST divided by FCK BD. Therefore, if you substitute in this formula, in this formula, this gives a quadratic equation in terms of D, solving which, uh, sorry, this is a quadratic equation in terms of AST student because here AST operated upon AST. Solving this, you will get what is AST required. Or alternatively, what you can do is that even uh, you can you can uh, use this formula, you can use this formula like this, right? Therefore, this formula is uh, like this, right? AST is given by uh, 1 minus, right? Uh, sorry, this formula, right? AST is 0.5 FCK divided by FI multiplied by 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4.6 MU divided by FCK BD square multiplied by BD, right? BD, right? Then for substituting which in either of these two, now you'll get uh, this area of the steel required is equal to, is equal to 884, 884 for this 
factored moment this factored moment of 220.66 kN not 147 student right is unfactored therefore for factored moment now i'll get not 572 student i'll get this result as 884 mm square 884 mm square however what is the minimum area of the steel as per this class is uh, is456 class 26.5.1.1 page number 47 page number 47 right therefore uh, now let me go to that page number 47 student right uh, as per this i will have page number 47 47 means uh, 47 plus uh, 13 right uh, now i'll move to this uh, page number 47 student i am there in this uh, page number 47 when it gives uh, it gives uh, uh, an expression that uh, ast by bd or a naught by bd is equal to 0.85 divided by fy divided by fy therefore using this formula using this formula now i'll calculate what what is the minimum area of the tension shield required therefore it, it works out it works out say upon substitution right 0.85 multiplied by b 450 multiplied by 565 divided by 550 right i, I require just 392 uh, 393 mm square approximately but what i got from a fletcher point of view is uh, 884 therefore 884 is greater than 392 therefore uh, a minimum area of the steel will not govern only the design design area of the steel will govern from fletcher point of view now fletcher point of view right therefore uh, now now let, let me propose uh, how many number of rods are required assuming either 60 mm dia bars 60 mm dia bars therefore uh, 201 201 right uh, this 884 divided by 201 884 divided by uh, 884 divided by 201 uh, divided by 201 i require i require uh, i require a result of approximately 4.4 number of rods approximately 4.4 number of rods or alternatively if i use if i use 20 mm dia bars 20 mm dia bars now i require just 2.81 2.81 therefore either of the two is true because we are assumed 20 mm dia bar therefore what now i'll do what now i'll do right like this right either using 6 mm dia bars you require 4.39 or say uh, next year uh, next integer is equal to 5 16 mm dia bars or using 20 mm dia bars you require 2.8 but next integer is 3 therefore use 3 20 mm dia bars as the uh, steel negative steel negative steel right however the diameter of the steel should not be less than 12 mm therefore it is okay it is okay right and and likewise now you can even do design for the positive bending moment in the previous uh, class we have elaborately discussed elaborately discussed or the same is the procedure right now just now i have done the design for a uh, mu mu of uh, movement of 220 220.65 like that uh, now you do the design uh, you do the design for 1.5 multiplied by 90 approximately 99 say for uh, approximately 149 kilo newton meter 149 kilo newton meter therefore there you will get uh, the number of rods required for the positive positive bedding moment of say approximately uh, one, 148 kilo newton 148 kilo newton right that you can check that you can check on your own that uh, maybe uh, so, some uh, sorry uh, that now works out say some 316 316 mm dia bars 316 mm dia bars right now that is how the positive as well as negative reinforcement is now fixed now fixed right now once i do the design for the flexure now i'll move to the check for the shear check for the shear therefore now i will have the uh, shear force at the support at the support right how uh, let me show the manual calculation then i'll move to that of the stand calculations also show it, right therefore the total load divided by 2 what is the total load is 36.75 multiplied by 8 divided by 2 it works out 147 147 therefore now um, multiply to 1.5 now i'll get uh, the factored load w u is equal to two, 220 uh, sorry factored load is equal to 220.5 factored shear force is equal to 220.5 therefore nominal shear stress tau is equal to v u divided by b d now it works out say 0 0.867 newton per mm square upon substitution but however we already provided the um, uh, 320 mm dia bars means i have provided 942 942 mm square therefore what is the uh, percentage of tension steel required percentage of tension steel required therefore now i'll get the uh, the steel uh, percentage of uh, steel required uh, provided is equal to 0 0.37 0 0.37 therefore not 0 0.237 this is error therefore this is 0 0.37 student right now i'll go to that of is 456 table 19 page number 73 student right 
पेज नंबर सेवेंटी थ्री राइट पेज नंबर सेवेंटी थ्री राइट वेरफॉर मूवमेंट राइट सेवेंटी थ्री देर फॉर आई डू हैव सेवेंटी थ्री देर फॉर फ्रॉम दिस टेबल फ्रॉम दिस टेबल आई एम जस्ट मे आई एम देर इन द टेबल नाइनटीन व्हिच Design share strength of the concrete from IS four five six two thousand right now I do have this point three seven therefore I'm just interpolating for uh, PT point two five I do have for M twenty five grade concrete point three six therefore for uh, uh, PT point five I do have uh, tau C is equal to point four right therefore upon interpolation upon interpolation from this and e even as well as uh, what is that uh, uh, tau C maximum maximum share strength for M twenty five grade concrete is equal to three point one therefore I'll note down both of these values, right? Uh, no, both of these values upon interpolation. Upon interpolation, now what I am getting? What I am getting? Tau C is equal to 0.422, 0.422, not 0.35, 0.422. However, we have uh, we have tau V. Uh, tau V is equal to 0.867, and tau C is equal to 0.422. Therefore, tau V is much greater than tau C. Tau C. However, this tau V 0.867 is much less than this. Um, uh, uh, Permissible, permissible share stress for M25 grade concrete is equal to 3.1. Therefore, the grade of the concrete need not be upgraded, but it just should provide the shear reinforcement. It is okay. It is okay. Therefore, however, I, I am concluding that uh, the, we need to provide the shear reinforcement. Shear reinforcement is required. Therefore, now let us initiate the design of the shear reinforcement as per this class. As per this class, um, uh, right? Now, once I initiate from that same class, right? From this same class, now uh, I need to have the shear uh, uh, taken by the stirrups is given by V U uh, uh, factor of shear force minus the shear resistance by the concrete tau C B D right. Now upon substitution, now I'll get I'll get this result as 113.2, not 131. Student, there is an error, right? It should be 113.2 kilo newton. Kilo newton is the shear resistance by The stirrups, shear resistance by the stirrups, right? Now, therefore, now I'll initiate. I'll initiate the uh, design, uh, design of the vertical stirrups, vertical stirrups. Therefore, I'm assuming two uh, m, eight uh, m divided two m to vertical stirrups. Therefore, as per this class, as per this class, forty point four, page number seventy three. I have. I do have this formula, student. Just now we have seen that, right? Uh, Quarter specification, right? And for this, just now we have seen for vertical stirrups, V U S is given by 0.87 F I S V D divided by S V S V, right? Wherein court says that F I should not be greater than 415. If F I should not be greater than 415, therefore, upon uh, substitution of these numeric values, now we will get uh, the spacing. Uh, this F I is not 250 to 550 student. It should be 415 as per the court. As per the court, even this. Uh, V uh, V uh, U S is equal to 113.2 113.2. Therefore, upon substitution, I'll get the spacing uh, is obtained as 180.9 180.9. However, even even as per this class 26.5.1.5 of page number 47 page number 47. Right. Let us revisit that uh, class student. Right. As per this uh, class uh, page number 47. 47 means uh, this is how that uh, I am there in the page number 47, right? This uh, page, this page says that, uh, right? Uh, the class says that uh, minimum shear reinforcement should be provided, right? As ASV by BSV 0.4 uh, greater than or equal to 0.87 FI. Also the same uh, class also says that maximum spacing of shear reinforcement. If at all we are using vertical shear, then it should not be greater than 0.75 D R. Are at maximum 300 mm, 300 mm as appropriate. Therefore, using this now, let me uh, just calculate quickly at a quicker pace, right? Now it works out the maximum spacing, the maximum spacing, right? Sorry, the uh, the uh, 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 the uh, from minimum shear point of view, shear reinforcement point of view, given this uh, this formula, ASV by BSV is equal to Greater than or equal to 0.4 divided by uh, 0.87 FI. Upon substitution, I'll get uh, this SV. SV should be less than or equal to 394 from minimum shear reinforcement point of view. But however, um, the design from design point of view, I got 186. Uh, sorry, 180.9, which is less than, uh, which is much less than that uh, from minimum shear point of view. Therefore, minimum shear criteria will not govern the design, but the design shear criteria will govern the design. 
please make note of this inference or comment student right once we know that however let us see also this uh, from maximum spacing point of view as per this class 26.5.1.5 page number uh, 47 just now we have seen that uh, the maximum spacing should not be more than 0 0.75 multiplied by 565 means either 423 or in any case not greater than 300 therefore 300 however we got 180 180.9 which is much less than 300 therefore let us say uh, let us uh, provide let us provide the two uh, 8 mm dia two leg stirrups either 175 or 150 150 right like this right therefore this is how the stirrups i am providing right all these vertical stirrups i am providing at the support at uh, uh, 2 mm dia uh, sorry 8 mm dia uh, uh, two leg uh, two leg stirrups at a spacing of 150 slowly they may be increased at the mid span section to 300 mm 300 mm. Now I am showing the detailing also, right? At the top, we have just provided three, not 216 student, right? 320 mm dia bars are provided. At the bottom, we have, we have seen that we have provided three, 316 mm dia bars or 220 mm dia bars may be provided, right? That is how the detailing after design, I am detailing the reinforcement in the beam as per the SP34, SP34, right? Now, once I see this, uh, the design of the beam, design of the beam, similarly, the design of the column can be done, right? Column can be done. However, let me show this design, these designs using, so far we have seen the, using manual calculation, right? Now, let me go to that of the stat modeling student at a quicker pace, right? Now, I'll just model, I'll just model this using the stat. Now, I'm there in this uh, stat pace student, right? This is how my stat model of that, uh, uh, portal frame of that of this uh, uh, assembly hall building, right? This is how I am there in the setup page, right? I am just giving the, I am there in the job job information, right? I am saying this is the assembly hall, assembly hall hinged portal frame. At the bottom it is hinged, right? And I am saying the client, right? You, I am just writing the structure engineering lectures is a client and as well as now you can say the directory uh, for saving that and it is checked by which engineer and uh, created by whom and approved by whom on which date that you can give right at a quicker pace right therefore this is uh, i am there in the next page geometry therefore i am defining the geometry right uh, for the different nodes right the first node i am defining it is 000, zero, zero that is my horizon student right whereas the second node is the top of the co column that left column is at uh, x is equal to zero the height is equal to four meter right z is equal to zero z is equal to zero right that is how x y z x y z in counterclockwise direction right then and the next third node is at, at the distance of eight meter eight meter and at a height of four meter and z is equal to zero z is equal to zero right likewise that of the fourth node is created at a distance of eight meter and y is equal to zero at the zero level and z is equal to zero right that is how the nodes are defined and once i define that uh, now i'll uh, define the element connectivity table or which beam is connected with which node right that is how the beam one or element one in fm this is called the um, uh, uh, element student right for further detailed uh, analysis using the finite element methods you please uh, revisit our playlist on finite element methods right what are nodes what are elements right what is the stiffness matrix and what are the uh, different type of loads and how the equilibrium equation kq is equal to f right inversion of the kq is equal to f will get the displacements q is equal to k inverse multiplied by f right i'll not i'll not go into that right you please re revisit our playlist on finite element method student right i'm not going into that therefore this element one or beam one is connected between the uh, local node number one as global node number one and local node number two as a glo global node number two right likewise now i'll go to that of the second element second beam is connected between the local node number one as global node number two local node number two as uh, global node number three right likewise the uh, element three is connected between the local node number one uh, local uh, node a is local node number one is glo glo global node number three and uh, local node number two local node number two is global node number global node number four right that is how the uh, element connective table will establish the relation between the local and global degrees of freedoms degrees of freedom right now once i see this uh, now i don't require any other any other page uh, page here therefore now i'll directly go to that of the uh, uh, general uh, general page now i'm there in the uh, toolbar property toolbar right therefore uh, now i'm defining i'm defining the uh, section of the beam as 0.6 depth, 0.6 depth, and its width is equal to 0.45, right? 
using the concrete material student right concrete material even i am defining for the columns columns right 0.6 is the uh, dimension in the span direction as well as uh, the width is equal to 0.45 0.45 right therefore i do have these properties which are already assigned to the columns also right or you can see that these are my two columns right these are my two columns right therefore that is how the uh, uh, depth is equal to 0.6 and this width this width is equal to 0.3 as well as that as well as that of the uh, beam the beam right this is how the beam right its a width its a width is equal to uh, 0.6 and its a depth is equal to 0.45 after all this uh, the span is 8 meter almost 25 feet is the span therefore the depth required is 0.6 meter from the experience experience right once i do this uh, now uh, even the uh, material is defined as uh, the concrete therefore now already ended i don't have any specification student right uh, now i'll move to the uh, supports page right therefore i'm defining uh, as given in the problem the portal is a hinged portal therefore at the bottom i have defined the support as the pinned pinned or hinged therefore i have assigned to the uh, support one as well as the support support for support four as well as support one right there is a uh, assigned this right and once i define this now i'll go to the next uh, page load page student right where i don't have any other definition uh, rather than that of the dead load and light load therefore i'll directly quickly move to the top these that page only i don't have any seismic or wind uh, other definitions i will close that page therefore now i'll go to that of the dead load the sulfate is now defined using this sulfate y minus 1 and that of the udl udl is there only on the uh, in the form of the uh, live load which is 30 kN per meter that you already calculated from the given geometry for the given plan i already calculated how 30 kN per meter however there are no loads there are no loads on the columns the columns right therefore once i do this now i'll define the load combination load combination right as 1.5 multiplied by that primary load primary load uh, which is 1 right 1 therefore 1 multiplied by 1.5 right now once i do this uh, now i move to this uh, uh, material student right uh, concrete i am defining this concrete as this right the uh, the uh, uh, young smallest of the concrete 5000 square root of 5000 square root of fck fck is equal to 25 therefore it now works out uh, 25 kilonewton per mm square right like that poisson ratio is equal to 0.17 and uh, and the other properties fy right uh, what is the other property the other properties i am assigning right i am using um, 25 newton per mm square or 25 e to, uh, uh, 25 and 24 minus 3 kilonewton per mm square both are same therefore i have assigned these uh, properties to the the concrete in the materials uh, um, uh, to, toolbar of this of this uh, we are there in the general general page right i am there in uh, toolbar of toolbar of material now that is over right once i do that now i'll go to the next page as the analysis i'll perform just perform analysis other analysis are also there pdl analysis and non-linear analysis etc etc but i'll in uh, in this class i'll perform only the normal analysis right normal analysis right but for once i do that once i do that now uh, i'll also uh, initiate the designs right i'll go to the next page as the designs I'll go to the concrete design. I'm there in the concrete design. Therefore, I, I do have this IS 456 page, um, uh, right? Uh, code, code in this uh, um, uh, concrete concrete toolbar, right? Therefore, I'm assigning assigning this uh, FCK 25 newton per mm square. FI is equal to 550, and for the secondary steel 415, and ELY, ELY, right? Hmm. Hmm. ELY is equal to 1.2. How I got this ELY is equal to 1.2 student? Let, let us revisit, revisit to the top the uh, main uh, data student. Right? Here you please see that uh, here the height of the column is 4 meter. However, as per this IS, IS 456, 2000 class E.1, page number 92, page number 92. Right? Let me go to that page number 92 student at a quicker pace. Right? Page number 92. Right? Just a bare for a moment. Right? 92 92 uh, now i am there in that page number 92 student right yes this is annex e which deals with the effective length of the columns right uh, however now code says that uh, uh, the effective length the effective length uh, can be calculated for the framed structures 
for the framed structures effective lengths of the columns in the framed structures may be obtained from this ratio of effective length to this unsupported length from as given in the figure 26 26 or 27 however this later 27 right uh, in, in the later case means uh, right uh, uh, where the ends are not prevented means uh, uh, right in the later case it is recommended that the effective length uh, ratio l effective by l may not be uh, sorry may not be taken less than 1.2 therefore in the worst case 1.2 1.2 shall be the minimum value L let us uh, revisit to that page now uh, that right this is our figure 27 effective length ratios for a column in a frame without restraint against a sway i am assuming that uh, even wind load will act on this because i am not analyzing for the wind therefore wind load will also acting uh, act on this frame therefore obviously it will sway obviously at the bottom it is a hinged uh, um, hinged support is given obviously it will sway student right therefore with that assumption now i need to calculate what is beta 1 and beta 2 however the beta 1 and beta 2 are defined as the now like this right where beta 1 beta 2 are equal to summation of the stiffness of the columns that weighed by the summation of the, all the stiffness of the columns and that of the beams in the denominator right right uh, this beta 1 is at the top and beta 2 is at the bottom at the beta 1 is at the top of the column and beta 2 is the bottom of the column now let me calculate let me calculate that uh, using this then i'll come to this page right therefore i do have hmm, i do have uh, beta 1 beta 1 uh, just of you already seen right here already calculated what are the uh, distribution factors right they themselves are the beta 1 i'm just recalling that student therefore just simply recall that right because i already explained how i got 3 by 5 or 0.6 right that itself is the beta 1 beta 1 the ratio of the stiffness of the column to that of the uh, 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 summation of the stiffness of the column to that of the beams it is now working out 3 uh, 3 by 5 or 0.6 whereas the bottom bottom column being uh, bottom end of the column being hinged right obviously it is zero once it is right because now it is zero uh, zero right now with it with this now i do have the calculation right from this figure figure uh, 27 what the uh, uh, figure 27 gives is that beta 1 is equal to 0 0.6 i am there here right however this uh, beta 2 beta 2 is equal to uh, zero therefore for that for that now i what i have what i have is equal to here uh, this is approximately 1.3 right 1.3 right zero is meeting with point uh, point six therefore that is a 1.3 however the code says that in any case not less than not less than 1.2 right 1.2 now i'll come back come back therefore from that now i do have this value as 1.3 1.3 not 1.2 student however this is just greater than just greater than 1.2 therefore okay however if it is less than 1.2 then we should have taken that as uh, we should have taken that as 1.2 but it is okay therefore once it is okay now i'll uh, uh, go to that of the stat and I'll, I'll assign i'll assign that property here right therefore i'm just assigning right sorry let me uh, modify that value i'm assigning right i'm assigning that value is equal to one uh, one point uh, one point uh, one moment student right 1.3 1.3 i am saying okay modify right likewise likewise now i'll go to i'll go to uh, the next next property even i'll assign the same in z direction also right now i'll assign that in the z direction also in both about both the direction i'm assigning that value right therefore modify how modified right therefore now i do have this uh, the uh, value defined now i hope you understood how i am giving ely and elz ely and elz right what is ely the uh, member length factor about the uh, major direction y direction 1.3 similarly about the minor direction 1.3 as per this um, uh, is456 uh, effective length factors page right therefore i have defined that right rest of these you already know right uh, i am saying the maximum main reinforcement is equal to 20 mm and uh, for all the members maximum secondary is uh, secondary steel is equal to 10 mm and start combination right i am saying that for all these beams and columns the uh, the uh, what is md1 md1 means the main bar minimum diameter of this bar for the combinations if at all right i am saying 12 mm and similarly that of the 
uh, md2 means main bar maximum size maximum size i am saying maximum size in any case not more than 20 mm therefore i am ending that uh, end bar combination now i am going to the main bar main bar right the minimum uh, bar size is equal to 12 mm as per the uh, code and the minimum secondary reinforcement is equal to 8 mm and i am saying ratio in any case these columns should not be having a, a, a maximum percentage of steel 4 as per the code actually it is uh, as per the code 6 but i am restricting it to 4 from practical point of view and i am saying reinforcement 0 means i am using the columns for these columns i am using the uh, stirrups tied stirrups not uh, uh, spiral stirrups right and i am saying r phase r phase 4 means the longitudinal reinforcement of the column is distributed uniformly uniformly among the four faces right among the four faces right once i define all these right now i'll, uh, I'll say that des uh, design this beam as well as design these uh, two columns also right now once i do this uh, now let me quickly analyze I'll, i'm just clicking this analysis student right just uh, now you can see that in just one one second only i got the output right therefore once uh, i see this uh, now let me check any ma failed members are there no it is saying no even any um, uh, mm -hmm. column is failing no right once i say no member is failing right now i'll go to the concrete designs right concrete designs as per this is 456 2000 is 456 2000 just now we have seen that in the beam right this is the beam 2 actually right uh, the uh, negative steel right uh, right or ast negative is equal to 871 whereas for positive bending moment for the sagging bending moment it is equal to 8 881.67 881.67 right whereas the uh, stirrups i got uh, 8 mm dia at uh, 200 mm center to center but uh, manually when uh, i calculated i got uh, 8 mm dia uh, 180 uh, 180 uh, 184 mm 184 mm there is a small difference small difference is there student right because i use these uh, combinations now it is saying that at the top uh, the area of the steel required is equal to 871 mm square at the left Uh, support of this beam however now you can use 9 12 mm dia bars plus 120 120 mm dia bars which will furnish an area of 1333 mm square 1333 mm square like that at the center uh, just 2 12 mm dia bars are required right uh, to uh, uh, sorry 2 to, uh, to, 12 mm dia bars are required right uh, like that whereas if i go to the uh, other end other end now i require now i i require same mirror image right whereas that of the bottom steel if i check bottom steel at the mid span is critical because at the left end uh, it requires just only 425 mm square whereas uh, by using 412 mm dia bars it is okay whereas at the mid span i require 882 mm square whereas using 1212 mm dia bars now we can furnish 1357 but however will not provide 1212 mm square practically they are not feasible practically they are not feasible but we already provided we already provided right uh, fr from this uh, co code book right i require 881 881 therefore even at the bottom at the bottom you provide 3 uh, 20 mm dia bars therefore provided steel is equal to 942 therefore okay required is equal to 881 provided is equal to 942 even here the negative shield required is equal to 872 therefore provided is equal to 320 mm dia bars 320 mm dia bars therefore that is a uniformly i'll provide i'll provide at the top as well as bottom both both right like this right both at the top as well as bottom uh, 3 320 mm 320 mm dia bars right and uh, i'll provide the stirrups at the rate of uh, 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 8 mm dia two legged vertical stirrups at the rate of 150 mm at the support 150 mm at the support which may be uniformly increased uniformly increased to uh, 300 mm at the mid span at the mid span right i hope you understood the design of this uh, uh, beam student design of this beam right now let us uh, see the analysis results right uh, analysis results confirm uh, whether they are in line with uh, whether they are in line with uh, that of uh, the uh, this one right now let us see that right and i will go to the uh, likewise student uh, you can do the design of the uh, column also right this is the design of the column student right uh, i'll now do at a quicker pace right therefore now the code says that in this column in this column you require some uh, 
0.6 percentage only but however the area of the steel should not be less than 0.8 percentage 0.8 multiplied by uh, 450 450 multiplied by uh, multiplied by 6 right therefore uh, uh, however from flexure point of view 1493 mm square is only required in this column in this column but uh, a, a minimum steel required is equal to 2160 2160 therefore using 20 mm using 20 mm 2160 you require uh, you require 6.6.87 uh, 6 6.87 right therefore however we have already assumed assumed 20 mm diameter therefore now you provide right 1 2 3 Right, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 20 mm dia bars like this, right? 8 20 mm dia bars for the uh, column. Therefore, the provided steel is equal to provided steel is equal to 2512. As against that uh, minimum steel is equal to 2160. That is of the column design student. I hope you understood the column design. I have not uh, done that uh, using manual calculation student. I am just doing that using using that of the uh, uh, stad. That, that of the stad, right? Even now, uh, now right even that of the right side column also the same design the same design right that is how uh, it will be shown however now you can see right let us see what is the shear force and bending moment in that right therefore now you can see that for dead load lie load combination right the maximum uh, sorry uh, this is of the deflection the deflection right at the uh, at a distance of 1.667 from the uh, bottom bottom end right from the bottom end right uh, sorry uh, from the uh, top end of the right side we are there in this right side column student sorry right from this top end at a distance of 1.1.67 meters from the top end the deflection this deflection is equal to 1.667 under service loads under service loads this is equal to 1.667 right whereas whereas if i see this uh, for factored load factored loads so this is one, uh, 1 1.093 1.093 whereas for unfactored load this is the maximum deflection is equal to 0.728728 therefore 0.728 multiplied by 1.5 1.5 that works out that works out 1.093 that is how even now you can check for the deflection also however that as per the code it should not be greater than l divided by 400 l divided by 400 i do already have l is equal to l is equal to 4000 divided by 400 400 therefore that uh, permissible value is equal to that uh, permissible uh, value is equal to 10 10 mm is permissible however i just got uh, for unfactored loads of point uh, point seven point seven two eight therefore it is acceptable therefore okay therefore okay right like that let us also check uh, for the beam for the beam right uh, what is that uh, deflection now the code says that the deflection under dead load dead load combinations right is maximum at this uh, uh, beam column intersection beam column intersection which is 0 0.022 0 0.022 because there the maximum deflection is happening like this right change of curvature right change of curvature right like this right that is what the deflected profile to some exaggerated view i am showing right deflected profile right that the maximum deflection is equal to 0 0.0022 mm 022 mm under dead load load combinations right even you can see the shear force variation shear force variation for dead load load combination is varying from 146.23 to a maximum value of 147 that sagging bending moment is equal to 147.7 to a Hugging bending moment, uh, uh, hugging bending moment of 146 in the beam, in the beam. Whereas for unfactored load in the uh, in the column, now I am there clicking in the column, right? Therefore, the movement at the base is equal to zero, varying up to a value of 146.23, 146.23. Now I will show that uh, even using the graphs also. Let me revisit to the graph student, right? That is how I will go to now the post processing, right? I am there in the post processing student, right? And now I am there in the uh, beams, right? I am there in the beams page, right? And therefore, I am displaying that, right? I am displaying that using this, right? Where now I will uh, initiate, initiate the results, results page. Now I'll, uh, I want to see the minimum, maximum, right? Bending moments, everything, right? Therefore, that is how I am just having this result, right? Therefore, this is for the factored loads, factored loads. Right? Whereas, for the factored loads, just now we have designed this beam, this beam, Right, uh, uh, for a uh, factored bending moment of 219 for the beam, 
uh, negative bending moment as well as positive bending moment is also 221. Almost both values are here and there the same. Therefore, we have designed almost for 220, 221 kN meter, and we have seen the results. We have seen the results, right? Whereas that of the uh, factored bending moment at the uh, uh, end of the column, which is varying from zero at the bottom to that of the column, right? It is. Uh, two, uh, 219, 219 factored bending moment, right? That is how the variation of the bending moment student, right? Likewise, now you can see the variation of the shear force also. Now, right, uh, let us see the, uh, or uh, let us see this value for unfactored loads, right? Yes, unfactored, right? Therefore, for the unfactored loads, just now we have seen that uh, at the end of the beam, it is 140. Uh, 6.2 to 147.7. Now let us revisit. Is it okay in confirmation with that of the manual calculation, right? Manually we got this result, right? What we got? We got 147.1 to at the center of the beam. I got 147.1, 147.1. But however, stat is giving 146.2. 2 to 147.7. Hardly there is small error. There is small error. Therefore. Once I uh, verify verify the bending movements manually manually in the beam, similarly the uh, manual calculations right can also be verified for the columns also columns also right. Therefore, once once I do this once I do this uh, once I do uh, uh, this now uh, let us see the shear force variation also student right like this now i am just superimposing there is a beauty of the software right simultaneously it is showing the variation of the shear force in the beam right at the end of this beam the shear force is maximum right whereas where the maximum bending moment is there the shear force is zero right that generally will teach in uh, the strength of material right sfd right this is the sfd and this is a bending, bending moment diagram right therefore there is a the shear force, the shear force in the beam, the shear force in the beam is nothing but the axial force in the column, is the axial force in the column, right? Whereas the uh, axial force in the column is the shear force in the beam, vice versa, vice versa. Even now let me click, right? That is how you can see, right? The shear force in the beam is the axial force in the column, the axial force in the beam is the shear force in the column, right? That is how it is now uh, complex, right? Now it is a complex, therefore now just quickly go to the top once again refresh that same page mm. Mm. the same page right wherein wherein now i will show what is fi value right this is how my fi value now i will show mm. fi value if I value the shear force, the, the shear force, force values, values, right? Therefore, this is how my shear force values, values right? Now you can see for the factor loads I am showing, this is the factor shear force, right? 220, right? Just to have designed the beam for the factor shear force of almost 220, right? At the middle span, it is zero, varying to 220. Like that, the shear force in the beam, uh, sorry, in the column is also seen as 54 kN, right? 54 kN, 54 kN, right? That is how the shear forces are. Even now we can see the axial loads, axial loads, right? Our axial loads will not be shown, right? Now, or I need to initiate that, right? There is also the variations of the shear force and bending moments, shear force and bending moments, student, right? Once I see this, now, uh, right? There is there is no error, there is no error in the uh, bending moments as well as the shear forces, shear forces, and just now we have seen the designs also, right? Designs also, right? Uh, what got the design? What got uh, from manual calculations, right? For uh, from manual calculation is that A eighty two I got A eighty two. Whereas the start after design, the start after design is giving a result of a result of it is saying that okay A seventy one at the uh, left support. Whereas at the bottom at the bottom A eighty one A eighty one. However, I got I, I got uh, from manual calculation. Uh, right, A eighty two. Even even stats also giving the same result. A eighty two. Almost there is no error student. Right, there is a, the stat. The stat will give perfectly the exact results if you subjected to the condition that you you uh, uh, model the stat the stat perfectly perfectly as per the given. Uh, uh, assumptions, 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 right? That is all. If there are no errors in the assumptions, then obviously the results will not vary. However, we already seen this, right? There is all the loading, and just now I have shown uh, 
uh, using the uh, graphs right there is the bedding mode variation in the beams as well as that of the columns right as well as that of the uh, shear force variation right uh, shear force vari uh, sorry shear force variation is in the beams beams right uh, that is how the design student i think um, uh, Uh, we are almost uh, right uh, done with uh, the designs, the designs of that of uh, the uh, portal frame, that of this portal frame, student, right? That is how that of the portal frame. That is how you can see, right? There is a uh, portal frame of an assembly building which is hinged at the bottom, which is hinged at the bottom, right? And uh, which is designed as per the IS IS four five six IS four five six. I hope, student. you enjoyed the discussion said right? uh, what we had in today's class right if you really enjoyed the discussions don't forget to um, uh, uh, click like share and subscribe to our youtube channel right we'll meet in the next class with another discussion right another discussion the discussion is on the uh, manual calculations uh, as well as that of the stat uh, modeling for the substitute frame right till then bye bye students